Hello and welcome to this episode of OFC TV Uncut. This is a series where we attempt to find out a bit more about the people who represent the club, the coaches, the players, and we want to bring to you a very candid uh, sort of uh, profile of everybody who's involved with the club. And in the very first episode, nobody better than the head coach of Odisha FC, Mr. Joseph Gambao, to start us off. Uh, welcome to the show, coach. Thank you very much. Um, coach, you know, I've obviously spent uh, a lot of time with you now and I've, I've come to know you well, but I think uh, there are a lot of questions which I feel the audience would like to know, um, uh, they have in their minds and they would like to know about you, uh, especially about your journey as a coach, because uh, for us, uh, you know, uh, in India, we look at Spain as a country that produces many good players and many good coaches. So when you were young and when you were growing up in Spain, what was your, uh, you know, who influenced you to get into football? Who, who prompted your love for the game? Look, uh, in Spain, uh, football is uh, like a religion. No? It's very important. A lot of kids like football. A lot of, a lot of kids play <coughs> football. And when I was a child, uh, this was my my main thing. No, uh, I started to play at age of six years old, and uh, after that, uh, I became a coach from 16 years old, and I keep playing until 23 years old. Uh, I saw this at home when I was a kid. Uh, my dad saw the games on TV. Uh, we saw together uh, the World Cup. The first World Cup that I, I remember quite well is in uh, uh, 1986. That was in Mexico. I was uh, nine years old at the time, and uh, I remember that we wake up in the middle of the night to watch uh, the games, especially the games that Spain were, was playing. And uh, yes. Uh, I went every every single weekend with my dad to the football in my village uh, to support uh, my my team and posta. And uh, this is something that when you are a kid, uh, you go to the school with the, your books, but also with a ball, because uh, in the in the free time you play football. Now you, you talked about your father and I know you're very close to your parents. And in Europe, we observe that football is a very tradition-based sport. You know. The, Generations of families follow, uh, you know, a single team, and parents pass it down to their children. Can you share with us uh, one such memory that you have with your father when, when it comes to supporting your favorite team? No, look, uh, with my dad, uh, we we are from a from a village that is in the south of Catalonia, called Amposta. And my father is member from from all his life, and when I was a child. Every Sunday we go to support the team, and I became a member also, you know. And uh, after that, uh, the team that we support in in the in Catalonia is Barcelona or Espanyol. In my home, uh, my dad is a Barcelona fan. My grandfather was uh, Espanyol, which uh, I have the love from both clubs because uh, even though they worked for both of them, uh, in my home I have two of my main persons, my, my dad and my grandfather, that they support one each thing. And for me, it was very usual uh, to watch on TV Spanish games and Barcelona games. And uh, both of them, they bring me to the stadium when I was very child, uh, to see Spanish, to see Barcelona on live, which uh, you can imagine as a kid is something special. And uh, maybe the best memories that I have is this, that uh, at the age of six, seven years old, I went to Barcelona Stadium and to the old Stadium of Espanyol that now is not uh, it's not there anymore, Sarriana, and I watch uh, first division games. Not and, and this is like a tradition, as you say, uh, come from from the parents to the kids, and, and and it's something that for me was my life. Uh, but also for all the kids that that joined with me in the school, uh, we are speaking always about football. We want to be footballers. We want to play one day from. First division, which after you, <laughs> when you grow, you see that it's very difficult. But when you are a kid, this is your main, your vision. No, you want to be a footballer. Now, few people know that you were a goalkeeper. You know, when you started off football, why did you get into goalkeeping? What was your uh, uh, thought process? I think it's the same. My my dad was goalkeeper. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was very child. They bring me the first ball, and my my dad showed me how he plays. He was a goalkeeper, and I think that this already come to me. And the way that you need to to catch the ball, these things. 
And uh, after that, I became a goalkeeper. You know, it's like uh, my dad was a goalkeeper. I want to be a goalkeeper. No? I think that this is uh, the main reason. And after that, you are growing, and, and already you are a goalkeeper. Now you made a switch to coaching when you were very young, when you were about 16 years old, and and you've shared that story with me, and I've, and I've heard it a few times. Would you like to share that again? So yeah, you know, <laughs> not a problem. Uh, yeah, I was uh, playing in that moment, uh, and one day uh, in the club they have the first team and, and all the divisions, and one day came the chairman of the club and says that the, that the coach of the under 12 just left the club, and he needs someone the next day. Take over, take the, the training session, and because I was one of the youngest players in the squad, everybody say, "Joseph, uh, this is your time." And I went there, really not knowing anything about how to coach, and also not knowing if I want to be coach or not. But uh, what I did is, uh, is try to to do what the other coaches make to me. And after uh, two weeks that I was doing this, I was enjoying a lot. And in that moment, I, th I think oh, this is very good. And I start to study to be a coach. I made my license very young. When I was 18, I have uh, UEFA B, 19 UEFA A, and uh, with 23, 24, I was pro license, UEFA Pro. Uh, and in that moment, I started to coach very seriously. I start to travel around Europe, uh, first Spain, to see how other coaches work. Uh, really became my obsession to to teach well the kids, uh, to, to make them progress, and, uh, and this makes that in short time the results came. You know? uh, in our village that was uh, not a big village, big city, uh, we, we put the team that I was coaching in the top division of the Catalonia League, which was something not usual, and not just this, if not that we, we keep, uh, we don't be relegated, uh, we keep uh, playing there, and. And this made that uh, after that I had the options to first work for Espanol and after work for Barcelona. I don't think a lot of people realize how difficult it is to become a professional coach, especially in Europe, because there are a lot of coaches, there's a lot of competition, and one needs to, you know, sacrifice a lot and, and really work hard to, you know, carve a name for himself in that field. So, uh, can, can you take us through, you know, some of your. Uh, Challenges when you when 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 you started coaching, what were some of the challenges you faced when you transitioned from a youth coach and then you went on to you know coach senior teams? Look, first the challenges in my in my life uh, were I was a very young coach in a in a world that is I had the same age as the players. And now it's different. Now the players see me as a as a main coach, but in the very beginning. Because I start so early, some of the players they have in my squad they were older than me, which uh, sometimes makes that uh, they think that maybe this guy is coaching us at the same age of us. He wasn't a successful player. But after that, uh, I think that every player is uh, intelligent and uh, players recognize very well when a coach improves them or not, or help them or not. Uh, the respect. Is always there as a person, but uh, to make that the people believe in what you are telling them, you need to prove, you need to do something that they realize that you are really helping them. In this case, as a football player on the field, no? when when uh, they saw that, that really you are helping them, when they said they saw that they are improving, in the moment they they trust in you. And uh, in the very beginning, I need to show and to prove myself in front of them just because I was very young. Maybe this was the challenge that more, more difficult that they had because of then it's like uh, this guy is a kid and he's training us, you know, we have players 35, 36, 34, I was 30 years old coaching them, which uh, they see me as a, as a kid, not as a main coach and, and uh, this you need to, with working and, and proving yourself, you need to, to go ahead. You're a coach who has a very, uh, uh, how do I put it, you have a very clear philosophy in terms of how you want to play and, and you know that's not changed, nothing changes how you want to play and, and, and you're very clear about what you want from the players. What influenced you, I know you're from Barcelona and of course there is a lot of history that comes with being from that place, but who were the main inspirations for you when you started coaching, uh, who inspired you to sort of 
create the philosophy that you have now? Yeah. Look, uh, in the very beginning, even when I started to coach, I was a coach that I like always to play, to have the ball, to have the possession. Before I worked for Barcelona, my six, seven, eight years in, in Amposta coaching. Uh, this was very clear. I remember when I coached the kids, but I don't allow to them to make more than three touches. And I saw the third touch need to be a pass, you know. Uh, this, I think, came from the influence of Barcelona. Not myself working in Barcelona, myself watching the games of Barcelona. And uh, Johan Cruyff is uh, the key of, of this. After that, uh, Guardiola, I think, improved what uh, Johan Cruyff did uh, in terms of a more adapt adaptable game of, of today, because Johan Cruyff was coach 20 years ago. Uh, after that, I, I, I became a coach in Barcelona, and, and I start to understand better why these things with uh, knowledge football knowledge, you know, because in the very beginning it's more as a fan knowledge. But uh, at the end, my belief of football came in, in one thing, it's like, for me, a coach needs to have his own way to, to work. As a coach, you cannot be a person that you are changing plans, the strategies, because you are losing when you are winning. I think that you need to have very clear the way that, that uh, you understand football, the way that you approach the game, and, and follow this. Until the end. And this is a uh, game from me, it's not, or maybe from all this uh, big time that I spent uh, trying to, to know more about football. And I, I sit down with a lot of coaches, I, I saw a lot of coaches working, maybe come from this, but as you say, for me, it's just one way to play football. And uh, I believe in that, in that uh, particular way, and uh, I don't think in other ways to, to play, you know, even. When the results are tough, I, I believe in, in this in this kind of football, and uh, and I think that this makes to me the difference. I think that when people approach me for a job, it's because they know exactly which kind of coach I am, and uh, and they want this particular coach. You know, I think that uh, in a long term, maybe you can lose some games, or maybe again that you know that you are uh, playing against a strong team, or maybe you are missing some players, but don't change this particular way that you play, in long term, bring to you as a coach uh, a lot of benefit. When you made the transition to Asia, uh, of course in Spain you've got very talented players because you know they're technically very good and they're used to that sort of uh, football, that style of football. When you made the transition, transition to Asia and when you tried to implement your philosophy with players who might not be up to that level, what were some of the adaptations that you made uh, in, in, in when you took over those clubs in Asia? Yeah, uh, I came here in Asia with a very clear idea of the way that uh, I want to play. And the first that I found is that some players in skills, they are not able to follow what I am demanding to them. No. There are some players that working with them you can improve, but there are other ones that even you working with them, you cannot improve because uh, sometimes uh, there are some things that you need to learn when you are a kid. And uh, after that, if you, your blind is adapted to do it in a certain way, it's very difficult to change it. Uh, what I try to do is always improve my players uh, in skills. I spend a lot of time uh, working in skills because uh, if uh, they are skillful, they can play the kind of football that we want to play. It's also true that uh, Normally in Asia, because a lot of the players today are professional. In the last time, in the last days, in the last years, they don't work so much in skills because they don't have this kind of coaching that show them. And when you work with them, they improve very quick because are basics that are not very difficult to make it, and just they don't know because nobody tell them. And I think that uh, with time, you need to spend uh, always. My teams were more success, were successful in the second season. Uh, with time, uh, the players adapt and play, and there are some players always, always uh, we had that uh, they don't fit in the way that we play, and we need to change. Now you, you you were at Kichi, you've coached in Australia. Now during your stint in India, do you think India is the most difficult country you've worked in so far? Do you think you've had to face the most challenges in this country? Uh, yes and no. No, in terms of players, players uh, for me nothing wrong. Uh, 
they have a very good attitude. Uh, clients I don't see any difference between Hong Kong or Australia. They, they want to work, they want to learn, they are smart, they learn easy. The challenges can come outside the field. It's facilities, uh, sometimes uh, simple things that you have in other clubs that uh, here, because uh, the structure of the clubs and uh, the particularities of the place, sometimes you don't have this. No? And, uh, and uh, for me, something very important is that uh, to work you as a coach and to do your job properly, you need to have your own training pitch that is just for you. And in the two seasons that I am working here, I, I didn't have, no? and, and I didn't have. And uh, yeah, these this, this challenges, but these challenges come from outside of what is the, the, the real football, which is the, the, the team, which is the players. Which is the now, for a coach, I know 24-7 there's a lot of football going on inside your head because every day you're training, there are games, there are results, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. What do you do to switch off from football? Because sometimes it can get too much. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite difficult. Uh, when I was more young, I, I, I used to, to train my team and after follow a lot of the football in Europe, you know, watching games and games because I think that I can learn from them. Uh, now what I do is just I, I'm focusing my in my league. You know, I I follow Spanish football because at the end it's my home. But I am not so much uh, watching football, football, football to try to disconnect a little bit. Uh, also, I think that when you became a, a dad and you have kids, uh, just to be in the, with the kids is something that in that moment you you forget football because you have your kids and. And in that moment, you can spend time with them and play with them. Uh, but coaches, as you say, is 24-7. Uh, but even in the pre-season, in, in, in the time off, because you need to do the team for the next season, it's a, it's a job that is, is a tough job. It's a very nice job. Uh, but you need a, a lot of dedication of, of this. But I think that uh, if it's your passion, if you love this game, uh, it's something that you do because it's what you like. You are known for producing a lot of young talent, you know, you work well with young players and I have seen that personally, uh, the way you have sort of influenced a lot of young players in our team. Does that give you a lot of satisfaction when you see young players doing well under you and then going on to, you know, do well in their careers? A lot, a lot. Uh, if I am honest, uh, and it's like this, for me this is more satisfaction than to win a trophy. Uh, to win a trophy, you win a trophy and that's after that that trophy is in your home or is in the club, this happens. But to help someone to achieve their objectives is something that uh, they tell me all his life, you know. And when uh, I saw kids that I coach uh, playing top leagues, because I, I coach the best kids in Spain, because I was in Barcelona and Espanol, and most of them, some of them, they are playing now in La Liga or in APL or so even some of them won the Champions League. And these things, you know that uh, you were in one moment someone that helped them to achieve this. Uh, most of them, they they contact with you, they share with you things. Uh, but even in other countries, when I went to Australia and I picked one, one kid that, uh, that just came from a refugee camp in Africa, and, and after that we worked together and, and he moved to Europe, and now he's playing in Europe very well. Yesterday night I was following his game and his score goal. Uh, this produced to you uh, satisfaction. And, and, and this is a quote that I I like. I always I have the this sentence, uh, and I say to my coaching staff, uh, "We are in a professional football. We need to win games because we will be judged if we win games or we don't win games." But I want that every player that they that we leave the club or he leave the club, he's going to be better than before he came and worked with us. Something we need to do with him that he improve, you know? And as a coach, if you achieve this, uh, it's a big satisfaction. When you speak with a player and, and then you see that he, he's happy because he learned it's, it's, it's the best way. And normally, everything comes together. If you improve the players, the level of the team go up and, and you win games. Alright coach, to wrap this up, now I'm going to put in front of you a few words. 
I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind when I say these words to you. The first uh, couple of words, your daughters, Bruna and Maria. My life. Messi. Best player of the world. Cristiano Ronaldo. Superpower, someone that works a lot to achieve what he achieved. Uh, an excellent player. But for me, Messi has uh, this talent that uh, maybe Cristiano don't have, but Cristiano works hard to be very close to Messi. India. Amazing country, beautiful experience for me and my wife. I'm so happy to to have this experience here in India. Coaching. My dream, my life, uh, something that uh, is in I did from the last 25 years. And finally, football. Football. For me, is everything. You know, we talk the football. Uh, I don't know what uh, what kind of life I I had if football is not there. But not just in terms of working, also all my friends came from football, you know. Uh, uh, inside a changing room you share a lot of moments, you share a lot of passion, and uh, I grow in this environment. Uh, all my friends, they came from football. It's, uh, without football, I don't know, uh, for me it's... Football bring me everything, and and always they say that they want to to be a lawyer at football until the last day that I will be here.